in the big fill stack, we'll keep you in the know. In the big fill stack, we'll fix your techie woes, and we'll break the gum, we'll make these till we're all together raking, and we'll raise a cup of grog down in the big fill stack. In the big fill stack, come and join our pirate crew. In the big fill stack, we will show you what to do. Now we'll hack it till we crack it, and we'll tell the world about it, and forget to tidy up. That's why it's now a bilge tank. Hello, and welcome to episode 034 of The Bilge Tank with Paul, myself, and Phil. Hello. Hello! So this week we're going to be talking mainly about the new camera, so more new hardware this year. Of course. It's yeah. been a bumpy year already, and it just keeps getting better. It does, and uh, yeah, very nice piece of kit it is. It's, um, we've got a little demo set up with, <laughs> kind of, um, and yeah, we'll have a quick chat about the camera. It's got some interesting features. Uh, the format's changed very slightly, very similar to the previous one, um, yep. but it still uses the same connector, still connects directly to the Pi using the CSI interface, and uh, yeah, nice upgrade for the same price. Yeah, as always, yeah, improve the specs, keep the price the same. <laughs> what was that? That was Ikea battery oh, right, chargers. Was, yeah. um, They're dead to me now. Ikea have <laughs> new shiny things. So. <laughs> the next Ikea thing. Bring it on. So, we want to talk uh, news first, or... Yeah? Yeah, let's yeah. do that. Bring the news. Yeah. They're new. Okay. Have we, got, have we got an intro? What do you want to start with? Uh, no. We'll start with what you got there. What's, What's that you got in front of you? What's this that? is the Awesome Shield, um, which is a Kickstarter project running at the moment. Um, oh, I heard about this. Yeah, I think they've been talking about it for quite a while, because um, I certainly heard the name for some time, uh, yep. and then it appeared on Kickstarter very recently. It looks um, yeah, kind of interesting. It's a shield for the Arduino designed to help you learn about kind of sensors and programming um, physical computing kind of projects. Yeah, it's yep. kind of cute. Including the name, it's awesome. Looks all right. Yeah. Um, there's another th product that has a similar name. I can't remember what it is, but is it the Danger Shield or Danger. like the slider and stuff? Of it? Yeah, it's yeah. a spark funds thing. This That's is the one. This is, I yeah. guess, is a, a kind of similar vibe, isn't it? Kind of a generic, uh, not generic kind yeah. of experimentation. Um, Native Fruit have got their circuit playground board for developers now. They have. Which I'm not sure what the difference is there, but they've uh, <laughs> they, they've kicked it out. Um, and yeah, it's. Uh, Basically, a shield is it's quite expensive. It's 48 euros, I think, um, which doesn't include the Arduino, so that's just the shield that goes on top. Um, but with these things, it's always the material that that really matters. You know, yeah, It's not the, the hardware the itself, it's kind of the, and the, uh, and the, the stuff you do with it. Yeah. Stuff they seem to have, at the end, they've got an RGB diagram, which seems to be some kind of interface. Okay. Oh, what you will get. Awesome shield, documentation. There's oh, there we the, yeah. go. So we got yeah. buzzer, LEDs, usual, connectors, usual headers, suspects. a dial and a switch and a button. Yeah, it looks kind of interesting. Slightly funny format, and I, I, the price is is high um, for a shield, but open source. Open source is good. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Maybe the diagram is higher up where they seem to have. Decent learning materials coming soon. Yeah. Hmm. Don't remember them make a fair Berlin. You don't remember them? No. No? Oh, there you go. It's in the video. The RGB thing. Yeah. Mm. Anyway, so what's next? That, that kind of in depth learning. Stuff. This one is kind of cool, but I. I sincerely worry for um, how tricky it's going to be to deliver. Why is my browser not loaded? Uh, this is basically electronic Lego, so it's um, conductive Lego bricks that you can build circuits with, and then they have custom modules, things like light sensors and lights and motors and what have you. And uh, it's just there we go. There we go. Yeah. Ooh, um, so it is the aesthetics a bit weird. Lego. Yeah, yeah, it is. But it yeah. looks like chromed out bling Lego. It is also that. Check out my bling Lego. Um, yeah, I don't. I don't know if the Lego aesthetic really works in metal, but the idea is kind of cool. Does it still clip together? Because I, I yeah, clips does. together for conductivity. They have these kind of spring-loaded pads at the end, so that ensures that when you put their bricks next to each other, they always get a good contact. Uh, so they're not really because you know Lego can yeah. fly apart very slightly, um, but you basically you build circuits using the the kind of metal or metal coated bricks, uh, and then you can add. Here it goes, a nice little gif. Add things like lights or sensors or motors or whatever. Um, yeah, that's cool. cool. 
there was loads of things about this gif here, conspiracy theories saying, ah, oh, it lights up in his hand before he's even put it down. And then lots of deconstruction about how, no, that's just a reflection. Um, read comments is amazing. Really, that's... I'll have to. That level of kind of... I assume uh, it's just because he's kind of rocking the brick into place. Do people really think it's that already? hard to make <laughs> bricks conductive? Uh, well, I think it's been done and failed before. The difficulty the with this being shown. is the tooling, right? It's, 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 oh, it's, yeah. it's the manufacturing. The actual things. the concept of the products is very, very simple. It's just very hard to create um, you know, something as precise and well, uh, well manufactured as Lego. Lego. They took years to perfect the process, and yeah. the stuff still costs a fortune. Yeah, but they've raised now, nearly half a million now. dollars now. That's uh, just incredible results, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it'll be interesting because they were only looking for fifty thousand dollars. It's um, strange so, the things yeah. that get massive amounts of funding. You could never <laughs> tell them ahead of time. Or you could. I don't know if you say electronics and Lego in the same sentence. That's going to be pretty popular, <laughs> yeah. I think. Yeah, but. that's true. <laughs> Lego are kind of leaving the um, the the door wide open though because they're not they're not doing a terribly good job of themselves. They just oh. don't seem interested, really, do they? Mindstorms was great. Mindstorms was one of the things I had as a kid, where and it really got me into that sort of thing and. It never really seemed to go anywhere from there. Just seeing the igloo, I remember I've watched the video for this one, and it's kind of ridiculous. It's, it's <laughs> worth a watch, it's quite funny. Um, but yeah, it's all about how electric Lego can improve your life in, in all situations. Um, Compatible with Mega Blocks. <laughs> what about. Um, oh, who's the other one who does that? Is this, is this one expensive? Lego. I didn't even bother looking at the price, it's kind of, uh, it is kind of cool. Oh, Wilco Blocks. <laughs> Actually, it's not bad. So $129 for a, for a kit with quite a lot of stuff in, but that's got three motors in there, and motors are never cheap. Yeah. What are you doing? Oh. <laughs> you should have generic blocks. <laughs> Wilco blocks. There are, there are many generic blocks now. What's the entry level? Uh, entry level. Where do you actually get something? Where do you start off? <laughs> $29 early bird, which is already gone. $35, basically. But you get, still get a motor for that. It's not, it's not like bad, actually. It's two by one bricks, which is a fair amount, but... Two, two by two by 36 two parts, so a dollar a part. Four by one block. i got to say, I, I don't know I don't know if you could even do that for a dollar a part. Oh, no, I think you could. Some of them are just conductive. It'll be interesting to Plastic see. Plastic only. Well, I don't know what the coating is. I don't know how they, the conductivity That's stuff. The, the, the wire is part of it. Mm. Yeah, these guys, are they like plastic bricks then somehow coated, or are they actually Maybe stamped just the from metal? Or? Or? Mm. Well, it looks, it looks completely metal. It could be We, we should probably, probably should have researched this a little more <laughs> before <laughs> talking about it. But it's kind of, it's kind of cool. I, that price point is very low. It seems too low. <coughs> but let's see. Good luck to them. Yep, we'll put our money where our mouth is and we'll it could be the classic Kickstarter of it, it being too low and then realising the yeah. production. Like the, um, the everything the barbecue cooler thing. That, yeah. That oh, the coolest cooler. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. That's going through Oops. a heck of a time, isn't it? Yeah. They're, um, yeah, it's rough. Yeah. Next up, we have <laughs> rtk.gpio. This is all, kick there's just a load of Kickstarters this week. <laughs> um, yep. This is Ryan Tech's latest. Um, add on board these kickstarting the idea being that um, it provides you kind of a USB interface to run Raspberry Pi hats from a, a laptop or your PC or your Mac or well whatever. just to just have the GPIO 40 pin format mm -hmm. um, from whatever this from USB presumably serial. is to go hand in hand with um, what is it their OS that allows you to stick a CD in your computer and start running the Arduino ID and Python and stuff without actually destroying your computer. Oh, Sorry, could be. OS? Yeah. The, the, the OS that Ryan and uh, Simon have put together. Ah, yeah. OK. So presumably this is to go hand in hand with that and it'll be tightly integrated, or not so much tightly integrated, but supported by, which is, I, I like the idea, I like the concept, but I, like, like you said, have my doubts about how performant it will be for things like I2C. Replicating the quirks of and the Raspberry Pi. Near pixels are pretty much out because you <laughs> won't get the PWM uh, audio pretty much out. Well, this is but basically this is um, something we talked about yeah, here I, as I an idea. Yeah, we talked about it, but um, we didn't but ever never evolve it to that kind of maker of Raspberry Pi pin compatible header, did we? I don't think. Well, that's the problem <laughs> because there's there's so many interfaces on that header that. I think it's all right it if you difficult. if you pitch it as kind of a, a way to pin toggle a header of the same format as the Pi, yeah. with maybe the same kind of grounding and power supplies and what have you. But the problems come when if you claim it's kind of hat compatible because a lot of hats use interfaces that this will never be able to offer. 
and that's tricky. So things like I, I, I2S, you, you won't be able to use this with DAX. Um, probably Unicorn Hat, I think, will be a struggle for the uh, PWM Unicorn signals. Unicorn Hat will be possible. I believe it's, that's an ARM Cortex M0. It is there, possible, so. but you'll but never you get the it. same behavior. Because no, it'll no. end up going over USB serial or something, and then you'd have to buffer that data in the ARM core, and how, you know, how much RAM have you got for that compared to a Pi where you can uh, it kind of do anything. It interesting to see um, how it works. <laughs> yeah, but um, Ryan stepped up and he's... Uh, he's done it. Yeah. yeah. Difference between something not existing and something existing, it pushes things forwards a bit. I well, mean, I can see I squared C and SPI working on that. In principle, and it's enough. mentioned as a stretch goal, I squared C, um, which would be a, a big boost because there's a lot of I squared C stuff out there. I think SPI is almost almost a requirement as well, really. I think um, the litmus test will be to tutor on horn, see something like Displayatron Hat running on there because there's no reason that Displayatron Hat shouldn't work in its. It'll need SPI. It'll need SPI. It'll need I squared C. Yeah. And it will need just regular GPIO because it does all the things. It does. It does. It's basically, do effectively the the everything that that should support in one board, I guess. And Explorer yep. Hat, which and uses hat, every yeah. single I/O pin, <laughs> but does does That'll again need cool I squared C. Yeah, it's which an interesting idea. It's almost halfway funded, so we'll see how it does. Yeah, I think I think it'll get past its goal. And that is no early birds left, so it's ten pound. Ten pounds fully I've assembled. Got in there for one of the early birds. <coughs> Fine. Good on you, yep. <laughs> Good price, ten pounds. Very cheap. Yep. Get in. And then last, <coughs> last up on my favourite <laughs> is this laser cut oh, rocket I model seen kit. This, but can't be a laser cut. I saw this on um, EEV blog. The the guy who's running this Kickstarter sent Dave Jones a preview unit, um, and yeah, it just looks kind of cool. Probably the coolest thing about it, other than the fact that it's laser cut and it's a rocket, which is in itself awesome is that the instructions that come with this are incredible. So because this has WS2812 RGB LEDs on it, in the instruction booklet, there's a whole page about how WS2812 RGB LEDs work. Oh. It's not just <laughs> this is, has RGB LEDs. It has like uh, extracts from the data sheet, kind of the timing signal data. <laughs> but this is designed okay. for kids. You know, It says basically 12 years and up. But the idea being that you don't just put it together and enjoy a glowy rocket. You put it together and you've got like, this booklet that explains how everything on here works, from the microcontroller to the uh, LED signals to anything that's kind of used on this board gets fully described. Even that it's got an IR sensor, so you get like a little remote control for it, so you can control the color. But in the documentation, there's a whole section about how IR transmission works, you know, between a remote control and the receiver, uh, and how the sig signals generated that's and how it's sent. Cool. And it looks like some proper old school documentation in in the nicest possible way. You know, the kind the kind of stuff you used to get with things. There you go. Look at it. Uh, and it's by a, a, a guy called Zifnu, who I think uh, quit his kind of career sometime last year to basically follow his own ideas and, and do stuff. So that is the yeah. way to go. <coughs> nice looking sheet of wood there as well. It's bamboo. bamboo. Yeah. Um, How which, tough is bamboo? Does it being survive being tough. shipped? Um, well, these these get shipped out as okay. those plates. Can we get it in three mil? The thing is, if you get it in three mil, what you get is often like edge cut, like you get the cutting boards. So it it's pretty strong. You, you basically can't make anything really thin unless it's ply, can you? Because it, it starts to get uh, the grain yeah. just falls well, apart. Well, rather than they have ply, but they also have edge cut. So ply for bamboo tends to be about five, six mil, I think, off the bat. Oh, look at these little LED lenses. Mm -hmm. oh. It looks like a, a little bug eye. Oh, that's awesome! It's like a little yeah little bug eye lens. Um, but yeah, and also the, just the PCB is just nicely designed. It, it, it's obviously a labour of love, and there's nothing. You turn into a lamp. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's nothing finer than a, a labour of love to make an LED glowy rocket, rocket ship. So and it's like, it reminds me of the Tintin rocket, you know, of the oh, yeah, of the uh, comic book. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah, yeah it's not actually a rocket. No. Unless you stick something to the bottom of it. Will not fly. Yeah. Um, but it's a really cute board and battery powered. And, everything else so we like mm -hmm. that one a lot um, I don't know whether it's likely to fund because it wasn't doing brilliantly but seems strange on the way the EV, EV blog I thought <coughs> it was a I only line traffic cannon I saw that video probably like five minutes before it came out so maybe and that was only last night so maybe it's okay. um, just not been out there for very long but yeah. it's cool we backed Spread it we like it uh, and then last up in the news before we go into the, the new Pi camera is uh, I just found this link on Hackaday it was really awesome uh, a lot of people when they're getting into electronics will find a point where they have to read a data sheet for the first time 
and they're quite overwhelming and they're absolutely packed with content because they're designed for engineers who know what they're looking for. Um, and Hackaday just have this really great article on how how to use a data sheet to help you determine if a part's appropriate, basically. So it talks about all sorts of things like how a transistor data sheet is defined, how you understand what things like HFE mean, um, and how you uh, translate that to kind of the requirements of your project. It has... Uh, what does HFE mean? It's the gain of a transistor. So okay. it's basically the uh, gate emitter by a gain value, essentially. So it'll tell you um, how much gain you get from it. And they have uh, things like how you um, parse kind of the, the diagrams and the tables of information. It's, it's just a good read. It's well worth reading if you want to better understand how to read a data sheet. There's not okay. much more to say about it than that, really, but use, it, just a really useful bit of information. Yeah. Well they did it, so you don't have to. Exactly that. So mm -hmm. definitely look it up. Yep. Uh, and onto the Pi camera, I think. Yep. <laughs> so we've got the new Pi camera. we got it in stock here. And a couple of nice things, it uses a Sony 8 megapixel sensor and rather than just the pixel boost, there's a great boost in things like the white balance quality, the image quality, um, they've unglued the ring on it now so you can now just switch the focus on it. It's still, fi it's still fixed focus yeah. but the, the ring is not actually adhered. It's a little tight but if you're yeah. careful you can, you can rotate it. You can manipulate it without having to break it. My tweezers it here, or did, did they get cleaned up? Oh, they're in the pot just behind there. Okay, right. They're behind the fourth oh, yeah, wall. Zip. There we go. <laughs> so I've got one. Oh, it's the one on there. The one on there is probably the one that yeah. needs focusing. Actually, yeah. So you can see there we've got. Sorry, I was going to get rid of the overlay because that's just distracting. You can see the green thing is pointing vaguely up and to the right. This green <laughs> thing here. Yep, the little tab. So I'm going to take myself some wide tweezers there, and I'm going to just grab the ledge above the plastic. You need a close-up camera. Oh no, I can't. I can't go over there and do close-up on this. The hand-eye coordination it would melt your brain. <laughs> and I'm going to take that off. Have you broke it yet? <laughs> so there we go. I've turned the focus ring, and now you can see it's pointing down and right instead. Mm -hmm. And it is a little bit tight, and if you do it too often, it may make it a bit too loose. So you, you focus it all over the place. Or something, though, I guess, to, to fix it, it back in. So if you want to show the tools there, see if we get a close up of that ring. So there, you normally take that off, but I've just done it there to show you. Uh, not that ring, Phil. That's part of the plastic housing. It's just There's a, a little, little ridge. ledge above it. Oh my god. Yeah. yeah. I would have just turned get yourself off. get yourself some good iFixit tweezers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, you're gonna need. This is not happening. Yeah. You should only really need to do this if you want to combine the camera with some specific kind of optics, a certain profile of lenses, basically. Yes. Yeah. Because obviously, it comes as default is kind of configured to just be used on should its be own. Should fine. But if you want to do a close up and yeah, as James is saying, you can use the head of a hot glue stick. Which is a pro tip from the head of a hot glue stick. That's we'll his answer to everything. Twist though. it so it, it gives you grip. Yeah. Oh, a rubber of a pencil to move it. Yeah. Yeah. But we need you need to be careful because obviously you don't want to damage the lens itself. No. But that's a good little hack and just good pull to play the protective around with. film off, Phil. There we go. See how much damage we've actually done. But you notice oh, yeah. a couple of tweaks like there's now a slight curve on the edge of the board, which is great. Oh. <laughs> I can't do it. I don't even know. Oh, wow. Well, that's. Yeah. Um, what are you know, doing to a the horrible, poor camera? horrible mess of that camera? <laughs> hey, does anyone want a camera? <laughs> that looks fine. Let's have a look. One previous yeah. owner. What I had to do was put oh, yeah. flats across it and make it until he kind of got between the little. Slightly yeah. eaten by a dog. It is, it's not easy, though, is it? Don't well, use it the tips, use care. the flats. <laughs> <laughs> and just gently wrench it around. There is no yeah, 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 yes. yeah, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> it's a knack thing. Practice on uh, someone else's camera first. <laughs> We're still on close up. Yeah. Yeah, okay, so we've made quite a mess of that. But yes, it is definitely possible. And as Paul says, use the flats of the uh, tweezers rather than the tips. Or a rubber. Or something else. Or somebody <laughs> else's camera. Or just definitely. don't. <laughs> but you definitely <coughs> can turn that. So, apart from that curved circuit board, let's get it up for the close up again. Uh, mounting holes have changed very slightly, haven't they? Is that right? Uh, they've got more exclusion around them and less components, so. Mm -hmm. 
Fuck. It means that when you have screws from like our camera mount end, they're, they're less likely to be touching any components and making people nervous about shorts. Which is good. Yeah. And um, because of that, the camera mount has changed slightly, so it's not the same camera mount as before. Yeah, he's got it's a slightly wider different. square hole for the sensor. That's about it. Oh yeah, the sensor is physically a little bit larger, isn't it? Yeah. The, the plastic package, so yeah. it won't work. This the new cameras won't work with the old camera mounts. Um, but the old cameras but very will work with the new camera mounts. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm going to try and build one now. Um, here, have, yeah. have this brand new camera. Brand new camera. <laughs> perfectly <laughs> functional. Here's one we opened there. So, the other thing is the, the current version of Noobs, as it stands, doesn't actually do the full 8 megapixels. It's still only doing 5. Oh. Um, if you wait a little bit, the new dev software for Raspbian will be up on the Raspberry Pi site very soon. But if you don't want to wait, then Raspberry Pi Guy has posted a little guide mm -hmm. on the comments to the camera blog post. Uh, which will, you know, help you get up to eight megapixels now, 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 <laughs> no, no, no. But it will require you to do horrible Compile things stuff. like Raspy update or something. Yeah, and you can also do um, RPI no, update, no, but really, RPI update ever. RPI update is a uh, very much a dev thing, so like, don't do it unless you know. Break what you're doing. my Pi button. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, I'm just going to build a camera mount here, which is very simple. You basically put the top two screws in, put a nut through them which helps level out the camera board. This is like a little standoff, isn't it? Just, yeah. just holds it back. Because you've got the ribbon connector just below the camera there, mm -hmm. and that kind of levels out the board at one end. So you need this at the other end to make sure the board doesn't sit at an angle. <laughs> ah, <laughs> no. It's a point. Don't tweeze me. <laughs> so, tweeze me, sir. That's your first step. Wow. La, 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 la. Just a couple of bolts in there to stand them off. Oh, I think the LED off the front has gone as well. You used to have an LED off the front. Yeah, I don't know if it went a while ago and I just only just noticed, but definitely used to have a red light. Yeah. Okay, step two. Let me just get that little. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank there. you very much. There you go. Because we, the whole reason for having a little camera indicator on there was because the red light shone through it. Oh, so right. we now so move yeah. that to the other side because it's irrelevant. Gotcha. Okay. Now we stick the camera on and make sure that the sensor goes through the hole at the front. Tidy. Da, 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 da. There we go. Beautiful. Stick two more screws through the other two holes and then we can start sticking on nuts. <laughs> nuts to you, sir. One nut. That's new. Ah, ah, ah. Oh, <laughs> Beware of squirrels. <laughs> ah, lost the nut, but that's okay. We've got spares. So these are M2 nuts. Um, for some reason, they always went for M2 because of the size of the board, and they are really quite fiddly. Which means Pi bows are M3 nuts, which <coughs> means three millimeter shaft. The Pi itself used to be M3, but it's now M2.5, and the camera is M2, so they've really done very well for the screw business there. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I think it's some kind of conspiracy. Mm. Fortunately, they seem to have standardised on the pie mount holes. Super so there we go, stage, stage two. That's screwed stage in. Two. Beautiful. Da, da, da. Magic. And then is it just the clippy thing? Gen just the clippy thing. Clip the clippy thing onto the thing first. It's focusing a lot better up close now. What's, mm. what's changed? I don't know. Maybe I should adjust it with these tweezers. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no, don't do that. So the clippy bit is the bit that clips yes. on. And it's, it lets you choose your angle. Choose yeah. your angle. You've got a various set of notches, and it just means that if you're using it on a desk as like a webcam or something, you can choose yeah. the kind of the tilt of the, the angle. The, the, angle. So <laughs> the angle of the uh, angle. Yeah. Yeah. If I put it at the top, you might need to take that back. You should have film. removed the protective film from all layers. <laughs> oh no! Don't forget to remove the protective film. You may need some spare fingernails for this. Yeah. Ah, can, ah. We get, can we get close to us looking in amusement at Phil? Can. If anyone's wondering why every time I turn around I twist my entire body, by the way, it's because I woke up with a really stiff neck this morning and I can barely move. I blame it, snooker. So. Oh, it probably was watching the snooker last night. Playing yeah. snooker, I could understand. Just I'm watching see it. Andy's on chat. Yeah, he is. Yeah, Andy, did you link to us a library you wrote for a four digit 5x7 display? And if so, could you link it in chat now? Because we're going to talk about that later. So a one digit 5x7 display. Uh, or was it four digit? No, it was four, it was four of them, I think. Oh, wow. Well, yeah. Go. Look at that. And there was a drive library. 
Okay, I'm sure he's had his name beautiful. popped up telling us about it. Now we can anyway. sit it upon the desk. It'll be all angled and stuff. Such yeah. angles. So you can get... This is just a really quick and cheap way for us to make a mount that was very affordable. Um, it's, it's, yeah, it's got good utility though. And yeah. there's um, a hole in the bottom, so that kind of works as a slightly ghetto press fit onto a standard tripod mount. Yeah. So obviously it's not threaded, but you can... But if you put you it at an angle it onto it. the kind of the half inch or quarter inch yeah. screw, three eighth inch screw, three eighth and inch. it actually does an interference fit, and you can screw it on to give it more, put a screw and nut on top to give it more safety. Yeah. So that works as kind of a uh, tripod mount. We could uh, we could put a nut or an insert in there, but they would cost more than the mount probably. <laughs> mm. So if you want to do that, that's... Uh, yeah. Thanks, Andy. There we go. I'll pick that. So, Andy wrote a library for the SLX 2016, which is this this very weird beast. Well, we'll look at that after we get off the camera thing, shall we? Yep. Uh, so, John uh, setting up. Um, so, following on from that, if we go back to. Oh, look at that. Smooth transition. Beautiful. No picture in picture errors. Um, <laughs> moving on from that, we go on to a bit of dev talk. Mm. Uh, Phil's, been, Phil's been developing the Pantil hat, and that's getting pretty close to release candidate one. Tilting and pan panning. Yeah. Oh, Drat. Yeah. <coughs> Give me those panel bits. You take all your rubbish. Thank you, sir. You put it over there. Oh dear. So this is um, this is actually a Model A Raspberry Pi that Phil's got the pan tilt prototype on top of, which is why it looks a little odd and has the Ethernet dangle <laughs> um, hanging off it and what have you. Mm. Handy dandy yeah. USB hub. So what we got here is we got a Pi camera with a Perspex shim, and then just a kind of Shenzhen special that little shim off pan tilt mount, which you can get a lot. It's two servos. You can mount something on the top of it. And Phil's built a very capable hat, which has things like space for the camera, cable to go through, headers for servos to be slotted onto it, and drivers for things like WS2812. Yeah, it's quite slick. The um, camera cables root down through the PCB, and then they plug into a header on the bottom. It, so they're yeah. literally just normal servo connectors. It doesn't normally in. require white tack to no. stick to the board, but I unfortunately followed the dimensions of this mounting pad on a yeah. website somewhere. And you you looked at the wrong. date sheet and it was wrong. I, yeah, <laughs> I should have measured it. Yeah. Yeah. I've measured it now. It all fits. Yeah. So this is why we have testing and revisions. And well, yeah, this is why we should print stuff off before we ever make a prototype out of it because a one-to-one -one print on paper will tell you whether or not stuff like this is actually um, going to fit. The other thing that's really useful is to laser cut it out of 1.5 millimeter yes, still perspex. Yes, need to do that. In fact, um, mm. the great thing about laser cutting a PCB design is that you get all of the mechanicals, so you can actually place your through-hole components onto it and prove that all the placements are, are good, basically. And yep. that's very, very handy. Very handy indeed. So, um, yeah, Pantel hat's kind of cool. We're going to bring up the camera, but I got a, I think the lighting in here is pretty terrible for us. So we'll have a look anyway. <laughs> it's gone to sleep as well. You're going to see really bad floor wall breaking angles. It's right, there we go. Okay. So, just if run you can the, read that. Okay, so, the camera is that one there. Yeah. Oh, there we go. There we go. It's Phil. And We're breaking the fourth wall, people. I should be able to Let's see. Phil, oh, and see how he concentrates. Oh, I can't basically see. Basically, okay. can't see what's on the screen at all. Let me see yeah. if I can uh, make that a bit easier hey, for you. There we go. There you go, Phil. Report and build. Now, don't take too much from the quality of the image here. I've had a go with the tweezers earlier, and I put some silver paint on it so you could see it turning. Why, why, why? And we've not updated my code yet. library even works. <laughs> you got a sample programming thing, haven't you? Yeah. This keyboard is terrible! <laughs> oh! Oh Wee. no! Four, four. That's a piece of piping code. Yeah, that's... Um, there we go. Full range. This will, this will tell me how and how to make it work. No Vim, Vim Phil. Not <laughs> um, import Pantil. A uh, new Pantil. Good, why not? Okay. Port Pantil. Oh, I'm such a fool. 
Hey, there we go. So wow. basically, Phil's got a Python library for the Pantil hat that lets you um, type in very natural values. So obviously, servo driving is a bit more fiddly, but you basically tell oh, it what, what angle you want it to point at, with I think zero being straight off the PCB. Um, so, yeah. well, so the theory goes. Also, the theory goes. So there's the full pie screen, so you can have a good look at it. You see, cell chain. Oh, oh. It moves so quickly. Wow, well, the fourth wall is destroyed. Oh. Whee. Whee. Hey, hey, John. <laughs> hey, everybody. It's a really good camera. It's quite quite a good field of view. Yep. It's, it's this. It's about this wide. Really, so <laughs> wide. <laughs> so wide. It's very useful. James so was saying that it's a little bit narrower than the old oh, camera. Is it a little oh, bit narrow than the old camera? Can you make the screen bigger, Paul? Which screen bigger? This, this one, one here. Oh, you you want you mean, yeah. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Import math. <laughs> I knew you were going. Oh, this keyboard is so, so light and horrible. <laughs> what is wrong with this thing? I don't need to do that. Man. Sometimes it's wild, true. Sometimes I get samples from Shenzhen. I Shenzhou, want the eye though. And they don't work. Uh, Mrs. Um, you can use time but time. Import time. Oh god, this it is so th I need the blue tap <laughs> to go under the keyboard. Well, don't forget else. to scale your plus minus. <clears throat> which you can just multiply by ninety. Ninety. Pt dot pan. Pan, yeah. And then stick, yeah, uh, make sure you scale that to an int index. Otherwise it'll have a bit of a wobbly. Have we got time have we got time imported? No. Fine. You can import that. Oh, oh no! <laughs> Danger is that? Uh, I think you broke it. That was amazing. Oh, right, just ran Star out Trek numbers. Numbers. That was, yeah, it was basically. So yes. yeah, if you want just to just land on the alien planet. If you want to simulate an earthquake, <laughs> then this is the hat for you. Well, yeah, you're going to need to wrong import there, time. So um, it's ninety. Because that's going to oscillate at an uh, insane speed. Time. You could I can <laughs> import it there. It just doesn't matter. Who cares? Yeah. No, that's pan it time dot sleep not yeah. point not one. What do you reckon? Yeah, go go for it. Oh, oh. Maybe more. Awesome. All of it. And the other thing you can do with this is Phil's had it set up using OpenCV so that it can do face tracking and then work out where the face is and it'll just pan and tilt to point That's directly at the freaky, face. That's freaky, so freaky. <laughs> what this? Yeah. When you got that just staring at you. Phil's nose is a bit freaky. Um, when well. it's got face tracking, you move and it just kind of looks oh, like Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's it's just just like side. It, it face tracked not only my face, but a Freddo Frog wrapper. <laughs> I did, <laughs> didn't it? And also that. a test face that I drew, which was just <laughs> three lines, no, four lines drawn in black pen on the sheet of white paper. I have a feeling there were times at which it believed the Freddo was more real than you were. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, no, track my face, not the Freddo. Yeah. Right, I'm, Human I'm, coefficients. I'm stopping that because I think every Everyone's feeling a bit ill now. <laughs> that is the good. ship simulator. <laughs> right. ba, 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 ba. And yeah, that's got pan and tilt, so it's like a two axis control. Um, and the other thing it's got, which is kind of. Can I pull that off there now? Yeah. Go on. I'll just destroy the demo. Screw those guys. So obviously, the pan tilt modules we sell anyway, um, and this has been designed to work specifically with those ones. <laughs> this is a bit of a, a slight mess, modification, um, but this has um, an extra header on there, which is designed for powering lighting rings. It so will... you can hook up uh, either a plain lighting ring, and you can use the middle pin as like a PWMing signal pin, which is how a lot of lighting rings work, or you can actually hook up a near pixel lighting ring. And it will let you do full color control uh, over up to 24 pixels, I think. Yes, 24. Yeah. So that's pretty sweet. Uh, and yeah, coming soon. Uh, and the final one will obviously be black and a little bit tidier. <laughs> yeah, work in progress. Generally yeah. finished. Yes. Um, so what else we got? We got the, yeah, we're, we're yeah, just yeah. currently, people are buying a lot of Pycades, it turns out. We're having trouble keeping them in stock. Um, so we're now starting to look at things to make your pikeade a bit more personal. Do we have some scissors? Uh, not Possibly. so much. A pirate corkscrew. Tweezers. No. No. No good. Were well, you stuff? going to chrome? No, me. not so much. I was, before. I was gonna. I was gonna trim Phil <laughs> before. <laughs> before ah. I fetch this. Uh, Brilliant. Tiny okay, knife. Teeny yeah. tiny knife. Yeah. 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 Y
So I don't know, where would you apply Chrome to Phil? I think maybe up the shoulder? <laughs> That's quite nice. This is a very Star Trek vibe. It doesn't um, very well, does it? Well, so not, this not is, to humans. This is usually <laughs> for car trims. Lafarge. But it works really good on the edge of 6 mil MDF, especially powder coated. So you see there, we have an original arcade style bling to the edge. That does look cracking, actually, doesn't it? It's, it's a, a great it, it looks much better than it actually has any right to. Yeah. We're also experimenting with various vinyls. So if you want to show that on the closer. Various vinyls? You can get these uh, vinyls you can apply to worktops and things. And we've been inspired in this by uh, Circuit Beard, Matt. Matt Brailsford. Yeah, uh, he's the got super secret cool. projects on. Yeah, he's actually in the chat right now. So, yeah. You know. Super project dude. And dude band, bro. Yeah, he, he knows a good looking thing and he does labours of love. And we found the vinyl and we're going to find a supply for this and start stocking this for people who want to stick it all the way to the side of their pikeade and make yep. it look a bit wood effect 1980s. And they do other stuff other than just woods. So you get like metal finishes uh, yeah. and it, it, we're going we're we're gonna to have a look. some convenient stuff, aren't we? Definitely, but yeah. If you look online, you'll find the stuff on eBay as well. We'll just stock stuff to make it easy for people to find yeah, for that, convenience. That Cut down to nice sizes, I think. Trim yeah. right there. Oh man, wow. look at it. <laughs> so bling. Yeah. It looks like one of those demos you got with a graphics card about 10 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> and it would just be like a rotating circuit, rotating. sphere or something, or the teapot. Yeah. <laughs> it is great stuff. Oh, if only I had more look time to play with this, it's amazing. I know, it's pretty cool. Well, we've got Sandy in the house now. He likes to play with Pike 8. He does. We need purple trim. We need purple, purple siding. <laughs> Bling it out. Just for his Prince tribute, Pike <laughs> Too soon? Yeah. <laughs> um, Leo is asking when the pan tilt will be available. I expect something like three to four weeks. It depends. <coughs> That's how long PCBs Working usually take to get production now, volumes. <laughs> I Very form-fitting this, I feel like a Star Trek alien. <laughs> Just a small <laughs> cosmetic modification to my head. Yeah. Yes. Uh, this chrome trim is great, we're going to use it on everything. It's, <laughs> stuff. it's actually really quite flexible, but it does hold its shape quite well, doesn't it? It does seem to be, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sharp corners, you need, to, you need to do a bit of crimping, I think. Um, yeah. Pushing in there. Bed it in. Yeah. I'm going to have a, I'm gonna get a better antenna on my surface. There we go. <laughs> Brilliant. Coming in loud and clear. Yeah. So next up, last last up in fact, um, Andy Kui tweeted I think something mm -hmm. about um, a library he'd written for these really cute little LED um, modules. Uh, yeah. Andy is also in the chat, so hit him up if you want to ask more questions. Uh, here he's used one of the Adafruit uh, Pi Hat prototype plates to um, set up a circuit. But Ahoy. basically, we saw this and we just thought the LED module was great, so we have sourced. Um, single digit versions of the same. Yeah, well, th it's kind of an interesting story. We looked at this and we kind of looked at where you could actually get it in kind of commercial quantities. And it was about 15 quid plus for one of those, mm -hmm. for four digits. And we thought, that seems a bit rich. Um, That's often the case with these kind of slightly odd yeah. form factors of stuff because they're so like low volume and <laughs> easy well, they still things, exist uh, now but then Nico he's he kind of gets stuff from deepest darkest China for us um, found actually the single digit versions of these which have been around since like 1973 oh, we get the running versions of them damn it these were they originally a TI part that, and then that subsection so of TI got bought by light on or something they're and they're just now made by TI Lighton. calculators yeah. or something aren't they so, so the original yeah. spec for this was like 1973 and they've been making them ever since so these are actually a lot easier to get a hold of. And after that, we got some samples like this in green and red. And Phil said, hang on, that probably works with the matrix driver chip we use. And he's basically got it to work. And so we'll probably have a new fat that you can put those on that'll be a bit better than 15 quid. One yeah. chip will six. not drive only one, but two matrices. It will, and the fact is uh, placements for six of those digits, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So you don't have to populate them all, but if you want six digits, you can have six, or if you want four or three or whatever, you just you just put what you want on there, basically. So. Yeah. But they are super cool. It's a five by seven matrix with a decimal place as well, so there's like an extra single pixel off on uh, one of the corners. Um, but five by seven means you can do quite attractive fonts. Yeah. Because uh, like five by five you, is a bit crushed, and yeah, five I, by seven. I reckon nice. I cracked it. So with four digits displayed vertically, you can do an IP address <laughs> more or less. 
four digits. Two digits for vertically. each one, like this. Oh, oh, oh like do, 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 do. So yeah, you can get real close to three digits. Yeah, three. yeah. Oh. just with a really minimal. Mm. I've had to cheat with the eight, and if mm -hmm. you have an address in the two hundred range, you're out of luck. <laughs> but apart from those that, guys were out of luck anyway, frankly. Yeah. Yes. yeah. So anyway, we'll see. We'll see how that goes. But it's been a kind of rapid prototype. Andy tweeted that like a few days ago, and we've already kind of sent off for the first prototype today. Yeah. Um, for a circuit board. So we'll see how that turns out. So and we'll have these modules in the shop as well because they're just super cool. They I mean, they're not so, even when they're turned off, they're cool. <laughs> they yeah. are. They're you not, see the circuit. They're not very cheap, um, but I think for something so unique, they're they're interesting enough to be um, well oh, worthwhile. Worth I yeah. will upload a video to Instagram of these in action actually because I've got a test set up that's um, stress testing on my desk. I'll just film a bit of that. Yeah, yeah Ooh, they're beautiful. LEDs. So it's been an interesting and inspirational week. It oh, also, been. big shout out to Pete Lomas. We went to see his uh, company who makes circuit boards, really, really impressive circuit boards yesterday, and he was truly helpful to us yeah. and showed us how his magical dream factory works <laughs> on <laughs> tight well, process. We Pete, for people who don't know, is a trustee of the Raspberry Pi Foundation. He designed the original board, man. He did, the yeah. original layout for the Model B and Model A. An all-round, all-round super nice bloke. He's a swell He's, chap. He, yeah. For sure. He's just been super nice to just about everyone. Forever, yeah. and, and they've got yeah. an amazing setup. From what yeah. you were telling me, yeah, a, um, yeah, it was just very inspirational for us. Just yeah, so thank you, Pete. Thanks, Pete. Right, um, that is up for us. That's everything. Cool. We got no new products this week, which is kind of mm, we've got kind a few of, in yeah, the pipeline though. So we've I got quite a lot in the pipeline, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, Many we'll see you next line. week. Don't, don't, don't forget, forget to, to like, subscribe. Don't forget to. <laughs> Comment. Don't Comment. Get, don't yes. get three. There have been some good comments coming up. Yeah. Coming around. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Cool. Thanks, folks. See you next week. See ya.